Welcome to Madame Ravens. This way to the library. She's been expecting you. Hello, my darlings. Today we're starting a new series, a post-apocalyptic one, by Omnipotent Mangoes, entitled American Dream. And Colton, thank you for listening, but don't neglect your schoolwork while you're doing so. You're a damn fool! I ain't delivering no package 700 damned miles. Jared, we wouldn't have approached you if we weren't serious. We're offering $200,000. Jared spat out the shot of moonshine and coughed, then looked at the strange man bewildered. What's in the box that's worth 200000 That's classified. I can't tell you that, Jared. I'm supposed to walk this thing for 700 miles and I can't even know what it is? Jared laughed as he took another shot and thought for a while, then nodded and picked up the locked briefcase and walked out the saloon doors. Ugh, why Phoenix, he thought. His horse waited for him by the post. Horses were a rare commodity, infinitely valuable for a courier like him, especially if he was about to travel 700 miles and back. A twenty-day round trip. Seemed like nothing, but that's a long time to be by oneself in a world like Jared's. Jared rode to a small shack in Carson City. Inside he grabbed his two six-guns, his AK-47, and an old shotgun. Next he packed as much canned and salted food his satchel and saddlebags could carry, along with ammunition a small foldable shovel, and many bottles of water as he could carry, and a bottle of whiskey. His bag could hold nothing more. Good. He won't be back home for almost a month if things went smoothly. And with his stuff gathered, Jared began to ride south into the Indian hills along 385, leaving behind the ruined and long-dead Carson City. He looked back upon the buildings as he left, some destroyed and some perfectly fine. Dumb sons of bitches, he thought to himself with a smile. A warm breeze overcame him as the sun shone through the sparse clouds. The old road was sandy and cracked. Vegetation grew from it that his horse could feed from should it need. He wouldn't have to look at a map for quite a while. He knew Nevada like the back of his hand and he loved it. So much so that what he named his horse, Nevada, a light brown female mustang he'd found and broken in some ten years ago. Oh, how much easier Nevada made his life. Before he tamed Nevada, he'd spent five years walking packages around the state. He was but a lad of seven when everyone died five years before that. His parents tried to make a life as best they could, farming a makeshift ranch, but bandits had raided it when he was twelve, forcing him to flee. He found a new world post office that took him in, and the rest was history. Reminiscing gave him a strong desire to drink the whiskey, but he'd better not. It was his only bottle for the trip. Besides, there were other saloons further south that he could get drunk at and pass out for the night. Was it smart to get blacked out drunk in a Mojave saloon while carrying $200,000 package? No. Was Jared smart? No. He laughed to himself a little. Oh, was he funny. The sun was going down, and it was April, so it would be cold as hell in a few hours. Well, there was an inn a few miles down the road. They'd have a fire. He was crossing over the Carson River now. Perhaps he'd better stop and boil some water to keep in his canteen. That would take about four to five minutes. Then another twenty to the inn. He'd be in a nice warm bed before it got too cold. But the fire he used to boil the water was so warm, and so was the whiskey that burnt his throat. 
With a slight chuckle, Jared acknowledged that he wasn't going to make it to the inn and set up his tent by the fire before hitching Nevada near the river so she could drink if needed. He laid down his sleeping bag with a cup of whiskey and some jerky. <sighs> Maybe it'd be worth it to tear down camp and head into the inn to get a whore. A sleeping bag was quite lonely. Maybe he would go cuddle with Nevada, he thought with a smile before emptying the cup of whiskey. Chapter 2 Jared's eyes cracked open. It was still dark out. Nevada was uneasy. As quietly as he could, he wiped the whiskey from his mouth and drew one of his revolvers before peeking out of the tent. Hey, you son of a gun, he shouted, stepping out quickly and aiming at the small figure rummaging through his saddlebags. Put your damned hands up. If you got any friends watching, they should know I'll blow your brains out if they try anything. The figure put its hands up, and a small voice stammered. Easy, mister. It's, it's just me. I was looking for some food. If you let me go, I'll be on my way now. Ugh. It's too late, you slimy bastard. I'm awake now. If I let you go, I can't safely go back to sleep. But I also don't feel like packing up camp and moving somewhere it is safe to sleep. See my dilemma? Please, mister, you won't ever see me again if you let me go. You're talking real hopeful there, friend. Jared approached and put his gun to the back of the boy's head. The boy cried softly and whispered. Please. Jared smacked the side of the boy's head with his hand and shouted, Get! If I ever see your face again, you better believe you won't have that face much longer. The terrified boy ran off into the night, sobbing. Jared smirked and mumbled, Dumbass, before laying back down in his tent. What time was it? He checked his pocket watch. 4.43 in the morning. Damn it. It almost wasn't worth it to go back to sleep at this point. With a groan, he sat back up and began to pick up his stuff before kicking dirt onto the embers of the fire. For breakfast, he ate jerky and chased it with more whiskey, finishing up as the sun began to crest the mountains. Hell, at least he'd get a head start on the ride, Jared thought. After a few hours, he was coming up on an exit. It would probably be best to stay on 395 into Midden. Jared hated Midden. The botched delivery there led to a shootout that killed 13 people and left Jared with a bullet in his abdomen. The shine and the women weren't anything special either. As he passed through Midden, he was surprised. It was a lot more alive than the last time he was there. People in the streets with market stands selling anything from produce to water to alcohol to wenches. He swore under his breath. One of those girls for sale was too young for this shit. Just a kid, still innocent. With a sigh, he hitched Nevada and hopped off, then approached the vendor. How much for her? He pointed to the young girl. For a night? No. The man smiled devilishly. Ah, I see. Five hundred. Jared cursed under his breath. That was a steep price. Ah, to hell with it. I'll be getting two hundred thousand here soon, he thought. Jared slammed down the cash and walked over and grabbed the girl's hand, then walked her to Nevada. What's your name, sweetie? Melissa. They mounted the horse together. How old are you, Melissa? Fourteen. Jared swore and whispered through anger. Were you there willingly? No. As they rode further down the road, he passed the reins to Melissa and aimed his AK at the vendor before firing and riding out of midden through the Gardnerville as fast as Nevada could take him. He dropped Melissa off at the next town of Charlie, a New World village constructed around a productive ranch. Jared gave her a fair sum of money and a small knife before riding off. Damn it, he cursed to himself. More notoriety and Minden, that's all I need. No matter. 
But I'll deal with that on the way back. For now, I need to plan. The quickest route to take him through Death Valley and near Las Vegas. Neither were particularly safe. Was it worth delaying the delivery for a safer route? To hell with it, he thought. I don't care if I die. Chapter 3 You got a gas mask? Why, yes I do, friend. It ain't cheap, though. No, of course it ain't. I'm going to be riding near Vegas soon, and I'd rather not die of the black flu. I'll take it. The elderly merchant nodded and hobbled into the back room to fumble through his things. Jared reached over the counter and grabbed a cigar from the jar that read five dollars. He gave it a sniff, nodded, and stuffed it in its satchel. A few moments later, the old man came back out to the counter carrying a pristine new gas mask. That'll be a hundred and twenty, friend. Jared cursed. By the time he was back from this damn delivery, he will have already spent half of that money. But he needed the mask and set down the two bills before heading out the door and mountain Nevada. He was coming up on Death Valley. That would be fun. He had a small old world souvenir map of Death Valley and could use it to find the safest and fastest route. He, preferably with at least one oasis along the way, it would be about a day's ride through the desert, one hot as hell day and cold as shit night, with little for Nevada to graze on or drink from. He'd have to share some of his precious resources. Then, immediately after he'd rid by Vegas, he'd have to wear his mask there. The black flu hit hard there. Hell, Jared thought. It hit the whole world hard. But Vegas was infected before the more extreme containment techniques were taken, leaving hundreds of thousands of infected bodies behind. Even after twenty years, infected bodies were dangerous. I wonder if Nevada can catch the black flu, he wondered, with a smirk, as he imagined Nevada wearing a gas mask. She better not. He didn't know what he'd do without that damned horse. Gunfire in the distance. He stopped Nevada and looked around. It was coming from behind him. A bullet whizzed by and struck the sandy ground, causing Nevada to rear. Son of a bitch, he shouted before spurring Nevada into a gallop. More gunfire. There were riders atop the hill as he had recently descended. Bandits? No, they liked to ambush and try to capture alive. These sons of bitches were bounty hunters from most likely from Midden. Jared pushed Nevada hard towards the nearby ridge. Until they reached it, he drifted her around the corner. The angle was too hard and she tumbled with a terrifying whinny, throwing him off. He scrambled to her side and drew his AK from her saddle before peeking around the ridge. They were riding hard at him, six of the bastards. Jared began taking careful and precise shots, killing three of the riders before their fire forced him behind cover. He dashed back to Nevada and drew his shotgun before smacking her rear and telling her to flee. Sweat poured from his brow as he checked how many shells she had in the shotgun. Six. He had two shots per rider. Jared dashed behind a rock and pumped the shotgun, then sighed. Their hooves were approaching hard and fast. They were on him. He popped up and fired the shotgun, shattering the skulls of one of the riders and causing his horse to whinny and rear, startling the other two horses. Two more shots, and the riders were dead. Jared sat down on a rock, whistled for Nevada, and used his handkerchief to wipe the rider's blood from his shotgun and face. A few minutes later, she trotted up to him spooked. It's okay, girl, he patted her. Within a day, he oversaw Death Valley and camped for night. As he sat in his tent listening to the music from an old MP3 player he found, he drank the last of his bottle of whiskey. Damn it, he shouted. That weren't enough to put me out. Jared launched the bottles as far as he could and waited until he heard the satisfying shatter of glass. 
he lit a cigar and walked outside the tent to Nevada and began petting her. So, quote, this raven. Well, my dears, there are two more chapters to this. I don't think it will be quite as long as this video, but I will get them out to you maybe Thursday, maybe next Monday. We'll have to see. Um, let me know what you think of it. I thought something a little different would be fun, and I enjoyed this one. Ah, thank you all so much for coming to listen. It means so much to me. And a special thanks to my Patreon supporters, Ermin, Darren and Jennifer, Laura, and Charlotte Emerson. If you like this, please hit the little button to let me know. If you didn't, hit the little button to let me know. Leave a comment. I'm always glad to talk with you, my darlings. I'm open to suggestions and criticisms, critiques. If you have not subscribed, please do so and ring the little bell so you know when to come up and see me. And I will talk to you next time, my darlings. <laughs> Farewell. <laughs>